Technological advancements are revolutionizing wine preservation and authentication, enhancing the security and longevity of investments. Blockchain technology now tracks a wine's provenance, offering a clear, unchangeable history from vineyard to consumer, significantly reducing the risk of counterfeit bottles. This digital ledger provides transparency and builds trust among investors and collectors. Smart sellers represent a leap forward in wine storage, equipped with advanced temperature and humidity controls, ensuring wines age under ideal conditions. These systems also feature sophisticated inventory management, streamlining collection oversight. Innovations in cork technology are improving bottle sealing, protecting against oxidation and contamination. These advancements help maintain the wine's quality, ensuring that each bottle reaches its peak potential. As technologies evolve, they offer collectors and investors unprecedented tools to safeguard and manage their wine collections, promising enhanced preservation, authenticity, and overall value. Dave, I think that a lot of people don't even really understand NFTs and aren't really sure if it's a gimmick or really adding value. Can you talk about how you've implemented cutting edge technology in your vineyards to improve product authenticity and to add value? Well, when I first started in the NFT, uh, actually a friend of mine from Hawaii asked me, he said, hey, listen, I'm going to buy this basketball card and it's, they're wanting $5,000 for it, but it's number one of 5,000. And I don't know if I should do this or not. And you seem to be the, you know, internet guy and everything. So uh, what do you think? And I said, I've seen you roll $35,000 on a craps table. So I said, you know, five grand to you is nothing. So I would do it, you know, just as a, just to try it, but I, I'm not going to do it. But if you want to do it, go for it. So he did it. And six months later, he called me back and he goes, did you tell me to buy that NFT, that basketball player? I go, yeah, why? What happened? And he goes, I just sold it for $85,000. <laughs> And I'm like, you're kidding me. Where's my commission? And he's just like, I'll take you to dinner. So I said, okay, great. And so that's what first started me into the NFT place. And then what ended up happening, I saw that Mandavi, Constellation, stuff like that, they were all starting to get into this NFT space. So what I did was I came up with NFT Wine Club, where we actually you know, have the chip on the bottle. It will register it to the blockchain for somebody that's new. And most people don't know what NFTs are. I sort of tell you it's a digital, it's like a artist proof. You know, you got the original artwork hanging on the wall, but it's an artist proof that they made, you know, a thousand copies of or whatever. And then you can buy one of those artist proofs. The only difference is they're going to store it in the digital world, you know, as a digital file. So sort of like a Bitcoin or something like that. So that's to me the difference. So when I did it on the wine bottle, that's why I don't feel like it's, you know, a bad investment, you know, for a wine club, because technically you're not paying anything for the NFT. It's free. It comes with the two bottles of wine that were still, you know, $99 a bottle. I'm giving you two of them you know, of my 2020 reserve cab. And then you, you're registered on the blockchain. So now you have that. Um, so that's, you know, to me, that's the NFT. It also shows your authenticity of the wine because it the number that's on the bottle that's what makes it unique is all these bottles are numbered there's actually a bot number right on the bottle at the bottom and then when you click on it it'll show you on your phone the actual number will show up in the app which is going to be backwards probably but maybe not but it'll show you that that's the bottle number and then you just hit claim ownership and when you claim the ownership uh, that's when you're registered to the blockchain and you can sell your digital image. Now, if somebody calls you and says, I want to buy that bottle, you happen to have bottle one of 1000 of the cab, then I want to buy that. If I haven't drank my cab since I get two bottles, I might drink one and then save the other. I can tell them, listen, I've got the original artwork with a full bottle. You wanted to give me $100 for that NFT that cost me nothing. Uh, you know, make it two hundred dollars or two fifty, and I'll I'll give you the bottle of wine with it that's full. If you end up drinking your wine, I'm telling you, don't throw away your bottle because your bottle is the original artwork. You can ship them an empty bottle. So I'm actually having a company where I can recall the wines if they have it. They can recall it because they're not allowed to ship it. I can get a label to them, 
and they can ship it that way. And then I can reship it to the new NFT owner. So that's, that's what I did with NFT wine club. What's made it so unique. And, you know, part of it, why I was in school, I came up with glow in the dark wine labels for the, to make sure it's real. And so I had the first bottles, my bottles, uh, own an, or Canaris Della Note, the moon, the vineyard, and the name and the year all would glow in the dark. So when you went to a restaurant, we gave them mag lights with the cases when they bought a case. And when they did that, they would just highlight that. And then when you took it to the table, because all fine restaurants are normally dark, like Le Cirque and Danielle's, and they could see that it was an authentic bottle because I'm the only one with the glow in the dark, dark label. So in Vegas, places like that, it was a great, great gimmick at the dance places and stuff because my bottles were just glowing on the shelf because of the lights. So it was a it was a neat thing. And, you know, I did commercials where the power went out and it was the only bottle you could see in the wine cellar. So it was, you know, unique stuff like that that we've done. So I've always been, uh, you know, I know about the dumpster divers that, you know, go, you know, somebody buys an expensive wine. They go get the old bottle. They refill it with two buck shot, seal it up, throw it underneath the ground, make sure it's dirty and resell it. And that that is a problem. It's been a problem, you know, for years of people when you're buying wines where you don't know where they came from, you know. Mm-hmm. So you do need to find what is that the traveling thing. And that's why I think the chip on the bottle will at least tell me where these bottles have been, uh, you know, on there. So it's a unique thing because I'll, it'll know who if it's been ownership changed or whatever, because when somebody else scans the bottle, they can't change the name unless you're the original owner. So you can't say somebody else, you know, can't steal the bottle if it's owned. So I think it was something I came up with to help with that because it is a it is a worry. Now, my wines have never been I don't know if anybody's tried to steal one of my wines because they're not that expensive. But I'm just saying that, um, you know, there was a reason I came up with that idea. They have those restaurants that serve in the dark because it's mm-hmm. supposed to heighten your senses for like taste and smell taste. because mm-hmm. you're not using your eyes. You're going to be banned from those restaurants. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Johnny, given your experience in finance and wine, are do you keep your eye out for like emerging tech solutions, things like blockchain and ways to enhance uh, wine's investment security and transparency? Yeah, I think that's one of the most interesting aspects at the minute. Um, the, the applications of the blockchain to wine authentication. There are some groups that will authenticate your seller for you and then that is transferable in the event of um you trading that wine i think there's other things that you know, david touched upon is that you, know, you don't necessarily need to move the wine to transfer ownership and if you have a, a ledger of who owns that wine then let's say there's a case of lafitte that has a 30-year lifespan from production to someone who eventually drinks it Maybe 10 people own it over its life. Does that case ever need to move? I mean, ideally, you'd keep it in even the cellars of the chateau itself and just trade the um, trade the token. uh, And then the ownership just changes in the ledger. So, yeah, clearly that would be the ideal of all um, provenance. Uh, You could have complete confidence in in where that wine has been, who's owned it and um, safe to say that, that it hasn't been messed with at any point along its life. So better authenticity and optimal storage, like it never moved. It just yeah. stayed in but Having said that, I've been to some producers where you often think that it'd be much better if it got out of their garage. But that <laughs> tends to be the smaller guys who, who don't necessarily have a uh, such a beautiful uh, underground cellar as, as many of these fancy uh, fancy wineries do. Yeah, it's good to go take a look for yourself so that you, so that yeah. you see what's really eye, going on. It can be eye-opening, yes. When you see like an ex-chateau release and you uh, you go to the producer themselves and you're like, I'm pretty sure they don't really actually have a cell of themselves. So the quicker you get it out of there, the better. How about you, Kesslia? Any technological advancements? Does it influence your recommendations for wine? Um. Man, I mean, this NFT stuff is totally new to me, (laughs) but I think it's really awesome. Like, I think to be able to authenticate everywhere that bottle has been, because even, you know, when I'm out and about in my in my market, I see these like really expensive wines just 
sitting in the sun, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, they're ruined. Um, and somebody's going to spend a couple hundred on this bottle that's ruined in the sun. So it'd be nice to know, like, especially when I'm buying a very expensive bottle, like, where has it been this whole time? Like, who had it? Well, whose hands were it in? Was it in? Was it temperature controlled? All of these things. So I think that's a genius idea to be able to track the wine for sure. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of other technological advances, but no. Are there I, apps, I, like any apps that you use just for like cataloging wine? I mean, Vivino is nothing new, right? But that has probably been the most um, useful tool for me to be able to track, um, you know, what other people think of the wine and just like a mental log for me of like, have I tasted this before? Oh, yeah, it's in my Vivino, but nothing. No, I guess I'm not the technological person to ask. <laughs> Sorry. To the guy who doesn't drink, it's all eye opening. I don't know, Vivino. <laughs> So thanks for the tip. Let's wrap it up and go to segment five.